Hello, my name is Callum, also known as Wanderloots, and welcome to this video on the philosophy and benefits of digital gardening. But what is a digital garden? I view a digital garden as a complementary publishing system to a blog or to social media. This is a place for you to plant your own idea seeds and cultivate them over time into trees that eventually can produce fruit using the power of links, notes, and web pages. This digital gardening analogy is very different than a blog, which is very linear and chronological. In contrast, a digital garden is much more non-linear, and it has what's called an emergent development. You link notes over time, and as you cultivate them, as you build on them, so your digital garden grows. Digital gardens can also drastically reduce the effort and the friction that goes in publishing content and publishing ideas online. This reduction in friction makes it a lot easier for you to focus on your writing rather than the publishing side of things. In other words, you don't need to use social media to publish your content and your writing to the internet. It's your own digital garden online. In this video, I'll touch on a few major benefits of using a digital garden. Non-linear writing, which is a lot more how our brains think. The three different components of a digital garden, which are seeds, trees, and fruits. How you can build a system that's very low effort and low friction for publishing your writing so that you don't have to think about it too much. It reduces perfectionism and reduces imposter syndrome and overthinking. And finally, I'll talk a bit more on how digital gardens fit in with the rest of the internet. If after watching this video, you're interested in starting your own digital garden, I actually have a tutorial video that shows how you can use Obsidian, a note-taking app, to automatically publish your content, your writing, online using the Digital Garden plugin. Obsidian enables what's called a personal knowledge management system, and you can selectively choose which notes you would like to make public and which notes you would like to keep private. It's the best of both worlds. I've found that this Digital Garden plugin is the easiest and the cheapest way to publish my ideas and my writing online while reducing friction and not overthinking it like I tend to do with my blogs. I wanted to quickly go over what exactly a digital garden is and why I'm using this plugin so that you have some more context on how it all works. If you're new to digital gardening, I highly recommend checking out this article by Maggie Appleton at maggieappleton.com slash garden dash history. In this, she goes through the ethos, the philosophy of building a digital garden and why it is potentially not necessarily a replacement for a traditional blog system, but an add-on for a traditional blog system. I'm gonna show you how I use my own website, wanderlutes.com, which is a blog website and a photography portfolio to complement my digital garden. So for example, this is a long form blog that I just wrote on how uh, post tokens can be used in Web3 to help writers monetize in a more sustainable manner. So what I'm now going to be doing is rather than dealing with the long form blog, which this one's quite long, it's about 6,000 words and includes a ton of information, I'm gonna show you how to build a digital garden that's a lot simpler and smoother and has a lot less friction. So as a great example, here's a website called Mental Nodes. This is by Anne-Laure LeCumpf, also known as Naran. It's a really good example of showing how simple you can create your own digital garden. Right away at the beginning of her digital garden, she has an explanation on what digital gardening is. She talks about the different levels of it, how you plant seeds, which don't have to be written in a publishable form. They can instead just be brief notes or concepts that you think that you'll go back to later. And over time, as you revisit these concepts, the seeds grow into trees you take time to cultivate them, to grow them into longer form writing, potentially forming the basis of uh, fruit. Fruit is new work. They're more substantial essays, videos, uh, and potentially a book. I think she actually just launched her first book, so it clearly has worked for her. And the idea is that rather than trying to take all of the time to focus on writing a very long and well-researched article like I did with my last newsletter entry, you can instead write effortlessly, write whatever comes to mind and then slowly cultivate it over time. Each of these notes is connected, linked by what's called a bi-directional link, a link that goes in both directions. I can create a link between my notes in Obsidian that allows me to reference one note to the next and tell each of those notes how they are connected. This is in contrast to the way that we typically think about hyperlinking, where I can tell where something came from, but someone can't tell if I linked to their website. The power of using internal links, bi-directional linking in a digital garden, is that when I publish these notes using Obsidian, the bi-directional linking system is maintained on my website. This means that when I share a note, I can see that another note has linked to it, which makes it a lot more easy and a lot more organic to move between the notes that I've written. 
it helps with the wandering and the exploration element of my website. This actually aligns with what the original intent of the internet was, to allow people to explore, to wander the World Wide Web without having to rely on a search or an algorithm. But instead, we can connect between different people, between different ideas, and move smoothly between the different elements of the digital gardens. Uh, as a helpful example, you can see that blogs are timeline-based. When you publish a blog, it goes one after another. Whereas the digital garden, we're dealing with what's called topography-based. So this is dealing with linking between different notes or different publications, rather than trying to have a standalone article. The goal is that you can have continuous growth, something that you cultivate slowly over time that has a lot less friction. It helps you show people your work as you do it. And then you can generate real time feedback that hopefully will help inspire you to create the long form blog post that you can then publish as a classic blog. So again, the idea is to have a lower effort form of writing so that you can get into the habit of writing so that you can make this a part of your life and you can start sharing your value in public uh, and then also use that as the inspiration for your longer form writing if you want to. So an idea of this is that in modern society, we tend to have this concept of perfectionism with everything. And I think blog posts typically are highly edited. So they take a lot of cultivated performance in order to publish a blog post closer to uh, writing a book or a research paper. And then on the flip side, we have uh, the chaos streams of social media, where everyone just puts out whatever is on their mind, stream of consciousness, and it takes very, very low effort in order to put something out. In between, we have private notes, which are things that don't get published. And then we have between the chaos stream and the cultivated performance, this concept of learning in public. And that's really where digital gardens sit. So the idea, again, with digital gardens is that you're able to just write how you feel and slowly build on it over time and then uh, have an automatic publishing system that helps build this garden. You can create new paths, you can plant new seeds, you can cultivate new trees. Eventually, you will form the fruits that form the blog posts. So what I'm trying to show you here is that we can take our private notes that we have written in Obsidian and you can use the Digital Garden plugin to form your own static website that displays a selected curation of your private notes. So as I'll get into later, it's very easy to select which notes you want to make public and which notes you don't. So you don't ever have to worry about accidentally publishing one of your private notes that you would prefer remain hidden. Maggie Appleton has a few different descriptions for her notes, kind of like Anne Laura does with her mental notes. Maggie Appleton's are seedlings, which are for rough ideas, uh, early ideas, perhaps just a concept that you want to expand on later. As those seedlings receive attention and energy and time, they bud. And this is for work that's been cleaned up and clarified, producing a budding. And then over time, it produces something evergreen, something that's fairly complete. And in my opinion, this is closer to a fruit in Ann Lore's system or a blog post that I would probably be using in my own system that I actually refer to as an alloy. So for my own notes, I have what I call an atom, a molecule, and an alloy. And that's just me because I tend to think in terms of material properties uh, because I studied material science engineering for my undergrad. But if you like the biological analogy, I would say use whatever works for you. But the general concept is that there's going to be three different tiers for the digital garden. So another benefit of building a digital garden using Obsidian is that it operates in Markdown. Markdown is effectively as simple of a writing format as possible, and it's completely interoperable with every system on the internet. So what that means is that, for example, if you were building your digital garden on X or on Twitter or on Facebook, on Instagram, well, you'd be building on another platform's property. And if they wanted to change the format and how it operates, there's no way for you to just export all that data and then create your own website. So building your own website and populating it with your own writing in an interoperable, reliable system that you own and control really gives you a lot of positive benefit for building your brand as a creator or just in general, ensuring the future proof ability of your own content that you're putting out there online. This is referred to as self-sovereignty and Obsidian enables effectively a decentralization of operating with Markdown files using the Digital Garden plugin because anyone is able to just connect their vault to the Digital Garden plugin and produce permissionlessly their own website. And just to give you a quick example on what this will look like, I'll show you my current Obsidian graph. So th this is what it looks like. I've got roughly 1,500 notes that I've been working on over the last year and a bit. And this shows the non-linear nature of writing in Obsidian. All of these nodes, all of the circles, they all have information in them. They're all an independent note. 
the lines are called edges and they connect the nodes or the notes and I'm able to connect the dots between my thoughts or between my notes over time. And this is really powerful because we tend to think that everything in life has to be linear, but in reality, the way that our brain works is much more like this knowledge graph. We make connections and associations between different concepts. So if we, instead of trying to write in a linear fashion, like a blog post, start to write in a nonlinear fashion, like a digital garden, we can start to produce a lot more connected ideas that will build and grow over time. So like you can see, if I zoom in here, these are all different independent notes that all have their own note contents. So now my goal and what I'll show you how to do in this tutorial is how you can take a subset of these notes or create your own vault and publish to a website that displays a digital garden that's a cleaner version of what this graph is. Again, the overall concept here is that I want to help you reduce overthinking so that you can just publish your thoughts, your ideas, and get them out there. This has the expectation that it's low effort, low friction publishing. So you don't ever have to worry about imposter syndrome or uh, being concerned what other people think about your writing because really this is just an extension of your own brain that's helping you host it online so that you can learn in public. I hope that this overview of Digital Gardens helps you to see the benefit and the value of having a note-taking system that allows you to connect the dots between your thoughts so that you can more easily follow your past trains of thought. And also reducing the friction and the effort associated with publishing this content online so that other people can see it. I personally have found using a digital garden to be one of the most fulfilling ways of publishing my ideas and my thoughts and knowledge because I don't have to rely on the whims of an algorithm or a search engine to show people what I wanna show them. Instead, I can cultivate my digital garden, growing it over time and provide a place where people can wander through my knowledge garden. I've also found that by reducing the friction and the effort associated with publishing, I can spend a lot more time focusing on the writing and the research and learning rather than figuring out how I'm going to publish it and which social media platform and which algorithm I should be catering to. Instead, I know that I can just work on my notes offline in my Obsidian digital garden and then selectively publish the notes that I want to online. How, if you want, you can connect it to your own custom domain, your own name, like I did with my digital garden at wanderlutes.xyz. If you're looking for an example on what a digital garden can be, feel free to check out mine at wanderlutes.xyz. And I update it almost daily, so every time you go back in, you'll start seeing different things, which again is one of the powers of using a digital garden. If you found this video helpful, I would love if you would please consider liking and subscribing, as this is by far the best way for me to grow my YouTube channel, which I'm very much working on. So I appreciate any support that you can give me. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video.